keep watching for lots of knitting and crochet on Yarn Lane. You don't need to change channels. Pop the kettle on and meet us back here in a couple of minutes. You can also watch on the Yarn Lane YouTube channel and Facebook Live. To get a sneaky peek of the products featured on the show and shop, please go to the Yarn Lane website at www.yarnlane.com or via our UK call centre on 0800 4 700 600. And remember, if you've already shopped with Sewing Street today, you won't pay any more postage and packaging for shopping with Yarn Lane because it's 1 p.m.p. across both channels all day. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app, onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street fans and Yarn Lane TV fans on Facebook and click join group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! I was having a look through this book. It's really good. So welcome to Yarn Lane. I am joined here by lovely Wendy Orlando, who's running into the studio. She's, she was skipping. She has been in. She's gone out. She's come back in again. We have got three books today, all brand new to us. And we have got different yarn packs to go with those books. So it's all about crocheting for the home. So we're going to start today with Crocheted Home. And I'm saying that very carefully because the next book is also a similar title, Crocheted Home by Kate Eastwood. 35 beautiful designs for throws, cushions, blankets and more. And they really are some lovely designs in here. We are just focusing on two today because it is it's full of different designs, but also I like this, always like this, is it's got this lovely technique section at the back of the book. So if you're a beginner, you've got this lovely technique section nicely illustrated to help you do all of these different types of, do you call them stitches when it's crochet? You still call it stitches. But look at these lovely little projects, look. So lots of lovely projects in here. Oh, oh look at this spring table runner and place setting and it does look like a piece of grass. How cute's that? So all of the details of the cushions, the instructions on how to make them, circular table mats. Is, have we got a project 
Um, have you done something from this book, Wendy? Oh, you've done these, haven't you? I've, I've done or you started? Yes. Started. This is the waffle stitch, and this is the yarn that you said is an absolutely beautiful yarn, didn't you? Right. Wonderful right. yarn to work. So Wendy started with this, so she's going to show a little bit of that. But if you want to do that, you have to buy the book. So it's twelve ninety nine for the book, but you've got lots and lots of. Look at this. This is nice too. This is the. What is it called? Popcorn, or bobbles? Popcorn or bobbles? Beehive tea cozy. This is called. I'm not sure if it's called a bobble stitch. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's crocheted in simple bozzle, bobble stitch. And then look at this. Oh, look at this shaker bird house design. I think these designs are lovely. They're just fun. This one's got the measles, measles cushion. So lots of things. So you're going to learn different techniques as well as creating these wonderful projects. These little coasters. So they've, they've sort of done it by room and by season, but of course you decide where you want to put something. Even this, look, little coat hangers, bobbly ha hanger covers. Oh, and the face cloth. You've done the face cloth, haven't you? I have, yes. So the cotton. Lidded baskets, I like those, they're nice. And a bobbly bath mat. So something for everybody to make. And if you're new to crochet, as I say, at the back there, it does have the techniques to take you through how to get started. So very beautiful book. Absolutely lovely. Um, now, we have some bundles for you, and these are to go with the projects that are in this book. Let's start with these ones. I realise I don't know my left and my right cat. These are for the table mats. You could use them for anything you like. But we've just got enough here. This is enough here to make the table mats. And the table mat is in the waffle stitch. Um, let's see if I can quickly find it again. Um, which is really, it looks really fun fantastic. And these are the yarns that Cat, uh, Cat, that Wendy, how can I forget Wendy said? <laughs> it's Mariner yarn and it's called Smooth Touch Cotton Look double knit and it is very very soft to the fill and this pattern particularly has been done in this waffle stitch which is it does actually look like a waffle so it's all 100% acrylic which is lovely because it's nice and soft and it means it's easy um, washable as well which is useful um, 100 grams in each ball we've got three balls we've got two of one color and one this one here is a variegated this is called random cream so this is our pack here to make the table cover. But don't forget, you don't have to make the table um, placemats if you don't want to. It's just a suggestion to what to do with these three lovely, beautiful yarns, lovely to sew, uh, knit with, crochet with even. I'll get there. Um, we have a second bundle in the same yarns, which is this one here. And this time you've got two of the variegated blue which is beautiful. Is this what you used, Wendy? Yes, so this I is what it. Wendy's yeah. used. So she'll show us that sample in a second. Um, and then a white. So again, it's the, uh, it's the lovely Mariner soft touch cotton look double knit, 100 gram, but it's 100 gram of acrylic. So it's easily washed, washed and dried. Very, very nice. So that's a really lovely set there. So that's 8.99 for that set. Then we have got what we are suggestions for the face cloth. So again, that's the project in the book. If I can find that one. Don't happen to know what page number it is, do you? It's quite near the front. Don't worry, I'll find it. Here it is. Here's the face cloth. That's the cotton face cloth. And what we have this time is we have two. We have two um, balls of cotton soft. This is a King Cole. So it's King Cole double knitting, cotton soft. This is beautiful. Again, it's 100 grams and it's 100% cotton this time, which is really useful if you're going to make a cotton face cloth. So we have two of this lovely silvery colour and then we have rows. So you can do the trim in the rows because if you look at the pattern that I have here, so you've got the cloth in the silver and then you've got the trim in the rows. And this is making beautiful, homemade, 100% cotton 
face cloths. This would be a lovely gift for a guest coming round. You give them their own face cloth and they can take it away with them afterwards. Uh, really lovely. And 100% cotton, so you can wash it at a high temperature. Our second colourway for this is white and azure. So you've, again, you've got the two white to make the actual cloth and then you've got the blue, pretty, pretty much like the picture is here. <laughs> Let's do it like that so we can see it like that. So then the picture here is what we've got. So that is this lovely colour. So we've kind of mimicked the picture, really. So you've got the two of the white, soft. It's very, it feels beautiful. It's very soft. King coal, 100 grams, 100% cotton. And then the lovely blue. You will, of course, need the book in order to create these two patterns that we're looking at. But don't forget, there's lots more in here. It's not just those two patterns. There's 35. And what you get at home, you can do as you please. But we have just put these together for these two particular projects. But, I mean, these are gorgeous. So, Miss Orlando. Oh, Miss. <laughs> just now, just now, in my ear, uh, uh, Joe's gone from calling us Orlando and Gardner to call us Wendy. 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 So I just keep hearing Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> anyway, Wendy. Yes. Wendy. <laughs> what are you going to make? Um, what are you going to show us? You can't make a whole thing. What are you going to show us? Well, actually, probably I should start with the easier one of the two, which is the actual face cloth. Now, this is amazing, this book. Now, as you know, I, I write patterns, so it's always nice to let someone else do all the work. But very often that does make us quite critical with, yes. oh, we wouldn't do it like that. This is brilliant, this book. It's fantastic. And there's so many projects that you can do in it. Oh, really, there? Really, really. My favourite, and is definite that I'm going to make, and I probably won't be able to find it now, was the bees. Oh, the, the, the um, that was the... The, the oh, bobble. Take the book that's gone away. The bobbles yes. on the tea cosy. It's just a mate there. How, yes. how Isn't that cool fun? is that? That is, that is so lovely. But yes, it is a tea cosy. Once you've learned the stitch and you know what you're doing and you know the multiples, and that's really, really important when you're working in knitting and crochet, that you learn what the stitches are in multiples of, you'll then be able to turn that into a, a cushion, yes. which is what I'm going to do because yes. I don't have a tea cosy. You don't need a tea cosy. I don't have a tea cosy. I don't. I have got a teapot, but I don't use it. So the first thing that we're going to do is the face cloth. Now this is very, very easy. Let me find, I think it was on page 40, there we go. And I love your idea, which is what I was thinking, that if you have, if and when we're allowed to have guests to stay again, um, our guest bedroom is set out as though you know, we're having guests. And I always put a towel set on there, but how amazing would it be to have your face cloth on the top with a little bar of soap all wrapped up yes. and just saying, please, Take, yeah, you don't really it. want a face cloth back from someone, no, do you? No, you don't. And I like the way, because I know, um, you know a lot of people sort of comment about make, make, makeup remover mm -hmm. and, um, and using cotton wool pads and cotton wool and things like that, and it's not good for the environment. So actually, using 100% cotton, you could, if you make a few of these, you could make them smaller, in fact, for doing makeup removal, and then just wash them and you can use them again and again. Um, I actually have got, this is what I use at home, is I have my makeup pads um, I just have little circular ones and a top tip if you are going to do that because this is perfect for it if uh, sorry not this one the cotton if you are going to do that um, then go up a hook size because it makes it softer yes so the general rule of crochet is the smaller the hook and there's always a guide on the band what hook you should use but if you go smaller than the recommended size you'll get a really tight weave but it makes it stiffer and if you go up a hook size, then it makes it more fluid and softer. Right. So I would definitely, if you're doing something that's going to touch your face, you need to be soft, go up a hook size. And there was, a, I've lost the book now, but there was a pattern in there for a coaster. So talking about small ones, you could possibly use that pattern. You could use all of these, these and that's you? the great things. Once you've learnt, once you've actually learnt the stitch and the stitch count, because as I say, it's the stitch count that's really important, because if the pattern is over 16 stitches, then you need a 16 stitch pattern repeat. So you either have to make it that big or that big. But if it's only like a two or three stitch stitch count, then yeah, you can absolutely make what you want. And I have, I'll show you in a moment because we are going to do the waffle, but I decided not to do um, a big one and just did a small one. I haven't done all my ends in yet, but that make a perfect coaster for, and, and that's not in the book, but that's just me knowing how many stitches work in the pattern and I've just yeah. done it smaller. See, so I'm, that's I'm looking what you can at, do. You're talking about f face cloth. I mean, mm. face cloth for a guest to take away. Brilliant. That Perfect. Night. Makeup remover cloths. Yes. Coaster size is probably all you need because you need a different one each day. I only have you? tiny ones. Yeah. But, but yes, and, um, and my to the point is that go up a hook size so they're really soft. Yes. Because you don't want them harsh against your skin. Um, but that's what I would do. 
Yeah. That's exactly what I would do. So we're going to do the face cloth. Now this is just, it's really, It feels really gorgeous. It is, it is such a lovely feel to it. Now I am going to work um, in, let me see which one that I'll work in. Now they don't come like this. <laughs> I have had delivery of my ball winder today. So of course I had to have a play with it, didn't I? I've been waiting for ages. You know, the wooden one. So I've been having a little play out there. So I've wound mine into cakes because the floor, as you could imagine, is covered in lots of cotton. And if I've got a ball running around it, it's going to pick that cotton up. If you can wind it into a cake, it doesn't go anywhere. And you pull it from the center and it stays put. Oh, that's a clever little Did nifty idea, idea, isn't yes. it? So if you have a ball, um, then you, if you pull it from the inside and you manage to get the end from the inside, you've done well because they say you can pull it from the inside. I always end up pulling it and then half of the ball comes out. So I always wind them into cakes and then you do have the center in the middle and it doesn't go anywhere. And say I've got a dog. I, I know you don't like my dog. No, no it's not I don't <laughs> like your dog. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan of dogs. I, I, think, I think I'm frightened of them. I think I had an incident when I was younger, and therefore it doesn't matter how people no, say I understand they're really that. they're really friendly. Really friendly. No. No, I no. absolutely understand that. Um, but <laughs> if it goes all around the ball, uh, the um, the lounge is thinking, yeah, I've got something to play with. Where this is static. So if you can um, buy a wall winder, that's amazing. Did you buy it from? Yes, Thanks. yes. Now well, I've, from yes. Oh yes, from Yarn Lane. I've got the, I did treat myself to the big wooden deluxe one because it, I work a lot in jute and when you wind the jute balls, they're about this big. So the big wooden one will allow you to do massive balls. Fabulous. Right, so the first thing we're going to do, and I'm not going to do the whole face cloth. I just want to show you the stitch because this is a, um, a lovely little stitch. Um, right, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to start with, just let me get, out of the way. This is worked in what's called the seed stitch. Now I've gone upper hook size again because this is just purely to show everyone it's much easier for you to see at home if I use a bigger hook. Now the first thing we're going to do is create a chain. So that's going to be our foundation chain for our face cloth and you have two ends of your yarn. So this one here that's got nothing attached to it is um, your tail and this is called your working yarn the one that is attached to the ball so the first thing we're going to do we're going to create a slip knot so we take our tail and we place it over the working yarn and we've created a loop so we just pull that loop we pull through the loop the working yarn and it will create a slip knot now what that does that will allow you to insert your hook pull the working yarn and then you can make the knot as big or as small as you want to and that's just called a slip knot and that's how we start when we do a foundation chain. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some chain stitches. Now for the purpose of the demo I'm actually only going to do a small face cloth um, because I just want to show you the stitch formation. So the first thing is to do a chain. Now to do that we take our working yarn and we pull it over the back of the hook and then we take the loop that's on the hook and pull it over and that is a chain. That's all there is to it. Now, if when you're doing foundation chains, always have a relaxed shoulders and a loose tension because you don't want a tight foundation chain. It might be an idea to go up a hook size just for your foundation chain because what, are the, um, what you want to do is create a nice even tension. So I'm just going to do a few stitches and I've lost counters if I'm odd or even, but we'll be able to see at the end. <laughs> So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to now work back along this chain. So you can see here on the face cloth, it's a nice, I would have started with a nice long chain. So we've got our chain and now we're working back along here. So all this, that is actually detailed in here, isn't it? It is. It's in the back of the book here. Yes, um, on, it, it's on in the techniques section at the back. And this is what I absolutely love about this book, because very, very often you're just told what to do. You just will do this. Yeah, do a chain stitch. Not actually how to do a yes. chain stitch. And this is brilliant. So it's told you how to make the slip knot and it's explained the yarn around hook. Now, the only difference is they call this YRH. Now, you'll very often see it being called YO. A lot of people yarn just over. call it a yarn over. Yeah. They don't call it yarn round the hook. 
Um, some people do, some people don't, but there is absolutely no right or wrong way with knitting or crochet. It's your way. So um, that's just get used to the book and the terminology they use. Now, the first thing we're going to do, I'm just following the pattern and it's telling me that I need to do one double crochet in the ch second chain from the hook. Now, the reason we do this is because we don't want to double crochet straight into the chain that's next to the hook because it's just going to come undone again. So that's the first chain from the hook and then we do a double crochet which is insert your hook, yarn over and pull off that first chain, yarn over and pull off both the chains on the hook. Now that is a UK double crochet, it's worked in UK terms. Um, each of the stitches are named something different and it depends how many times you or if even if you do wind your round your wind your yarn round before you put it into your your work we don't with a double crochet because it's one of the smaller stitches that you can do so the next thing it's telling us to do is to do one treble into the next chain now each of these are chains and we're going to be working one stitch into each of them so we've done our double crochet so now we need to do a treble now a treble is one of those stitches that we put the yarn around the hook before we insert it into the stitch. So we do yarn over, insert, yarn over and pull through. We now have three loops on the hook. Yarn over, take the first two off and yarn over and take the remaining two off. So our first stitch was a double crochet which was a very short stitch. We've now increased it in height, so we've done a treble. So you can see it's going upwards. So now the next stitch we do is another double crochet. So into the next one we do insert hook, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over and pull through both loops. So this is what is creating our seed stitch. So we're doing double crochet, treble, double crochet, treble. So the next one is a treble. You're concentrating over there. I, I really am. I'm actually what fascinated. <laughs> You're showing it so beautifully. So we've done double crochet, treble. So we've gone up. We've got. We're, so we're lower, higher, lower, higher, lower, higher. And you can see that when you work that into the piece, it creates this beautiful stitch, and that's what's called the seed stitch. And it's quite holy. I've gone. I I tend to go up. Um, a hook size. Now you can see in the picture, it's very hard to, to, to see in the picture because they folded and folded it, so it's got four folds on there. Um, but that's that's to my point that if you were to go, if you do the recommended stitch uh, hook size, it may be more dense. So just have a play. If you if it's too dense and too stiff, go up a hook size. You don't want it stiff and dense a with face, a face cloth, yeah, do it's you? It's a face cloth at the end of the day, so it doesn't even matter if it doesn't come out the size they say. I'm, or I always say that it doesn't matter about your tension and your swatch and a swatch is simply where you do a little bit, measure it to see if it's the same as what they do unless it's an item that you need to wear or it needs to fit then you need to really make sure yes. your swatch is the right size but for something like a blanket or a face cloth it doesn't matter does it? No. Right, so the next, and then we just carry on and um, I'll just explain a little bit for those that are fairly new, you'll have um, You'll have little stars or you'll have something in brackets and all that means is that you repeat in brackets until the end so instead of saying double crochet treble double crochet double treble, uh, treble crochet all the way along for however many stitches you've got they just tell you to repeat a certain section um, and that's all this has done here well see you're following that's good so you can see in row one it's telling you it's got a little star and it's telling you to do okay. two things and then it's saying repeat from star to star until the end. So we've done our double crochet, treble, double crochet, treble. So now we're back to doing our double crochet and we just go along this foundation chain and it does state in the book how many stitches that you need to do. But again, this is a face cloth. It doesn't matter if it's not the right size. Sorry, I'm just... It's very hot in here. So, it is so actually. Isn't it, it is. So um, the, uh, the cotton is is pulling on the uh, the hook. Well, so what's a hook size are you using there? For me, I'm using a four and a half. Now the pattern does actually state a three and a half, but if I do a three and a half 
on air, it's going to be, the stitch is going to be really small, so people aren't right. maybe going to see what I'm doing. But you can, this one was done with a four and a half, and it's really, you can just see how I love how the way that it's really soft, because I felt it earlier. It is, isn't it? Yes. Um, so if I did the correct size hook, then it would be a little bit more dense. There's nothing wrong with it. If you prefer um, uh, a firmer flannel, that's fine. It doesn't matter, yeah. but I, I like it soft. I think I like the idea of it being soft. But that, as I say, this is, it doesn't matter because it's, it's not going to fit anyone. If you change the hook size around, then it's not going to matter. So I've done my first row, and then all I'm going to do is... You do a treble at the end, by the way. <laughs> just thought I'd let you know, because I read it. I've just done a treble at the end. <laughs> Good, glad you've done that. Um, just quickly <laughs> saying to you, with the pink... The uh, dusky pink and the silver grey uh, is, is flying out. We've, we've got less than 10 of those left. So if you are interested in that, please nab now whilst you can. And the book is also very, very popular. And you need the book to do all these lovely designs and more. because 35 designs in here. Lots of lovely designs. We're on this face cloth at the moment. This is brand new today and it's 12 99 for 35 different designs. So it's really good. Sorry, Wendy. I was actually just going to say, and you'll see here, um, if you can see it on there, I've got a stitch left over. Now, I knew that I have to finish on a treble, so I don't need that. I have a massive top tip, is when you're doing a foundation chain, do it longer than you need. Because if you're working in trebles, you create the first treble by missing chains. So you would like work in the third chain from the hook. If you're doing that, if you do a, a slightly longer chain than you need, you can always unpick the stitches at the end. But the amount of times when I was learning that I would do my foundation chain and I wouldn't have the right amount of stitches on. So I thought I would do it a little bit longer than I need and then you can always unpick this. And all you just literally do is just unpick it. So it's brilliant. So that's just a top tip. Thank you, that's handy. Now on our second um, row, what we're going to do is we're going to work back this way. Now to do that, we need to turn our work. Now, some people chain one and turn, and some people turn and chain one. The outcome is exactly the same, and it doesn't matter. It's, it's telling here to turn first, so I would do as my told. I'm going to turn. <laughs> How often does that happen? It doesn't <laughs> happen very often. <laughs> and it is a really good idea here to put a stitch marker in that last stitch. If you're, if you're not sure where you need to actually insert, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a chain one. So I'm just doing, and it's called a turning chain. So I'm going to chain one, and it's now telling me that I need to do a double crochet in that first stitch. So if you, if you put a stitch marker in there, you'll know exactly where you are. So we insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through both. And that is the first double crochet. And then we just continue along, telling us what it needs to do. So we're doing a treble. So it's the same stitch, we're doing a treble and then a double crochet and a treble and you work all the way along I like the way it tells you how many stitches you should have at yes. the end of the row as well. A good pattern will always do that yeah. so that um, there's no second guessing you, you make sure that you've got the right amount. Now this is a project that you will need to count for you will need to concentrate and then all we do is just continue to the end. So I'm doing double trebles, uh, double crochet and trebles. And then what does it tell me to do at the end? At the end, Oh. you do a treble. One double crochet. Right, so I am at the end, I've gone. And then you would just repeat all the way along and eventually you will get a square all the way up. And they absolutely are brilliant. Do you actually, I know you don't crochet, do you knit? I can knit. Yeah. So with knitting, you have to cast off, don't you? Yes. Well, with crochet, you don't have to cast off. Because when you've got to the end of it, you just cut your yarn, pull it through, and job done. Oh. You're finished. It's brilliant. Crochet is very, very, well, both no, crochet and knitting are very versatile because you can take them on the move. Yes. Uh, you know, I had a train journey not so long ago, and I'd take my bag of crochet with me, and i sit, I mean... I don't care what I look like because I enjoy it, but I was sitting there on the train crocheting. Um, but yes, with crochet, then all you would do, you would just keep going and going and going. And you can either do the amount they say, or if you want it that size, have it that size. 
that's yes, totally up to exactly. you. That's up to you, isn't it? It is. The yarn that we've got in the packs is enough to make the size and more, I would think. Yes. Yes, and more. So you can make, we think you could make two with the yarn we're providing. Uh, well, I would say maybe you'd have to have a striped one for the second one because that was that was left oh, over. Oh, of course, because you'd have more of one left over than the other, wouldn't you? Because yes. you're using that's only just being used around the outside. Yes. So, um, and this this is fantastic. Um, this edging, this is a really really lovely edging. To, to do, I just did put an edging around the outside and it's all explained in the, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at the time, I'm just a little bit worried that we're not gonna, we need to move on to the next stitch, don't we? Um, but again, you can put whatever edging you want, yes. but it is all explained in there and it's only a, um, yes, it's only a three round border. So it's really, really easy to do and it, it all explains it in there. So that is the face cloth. And then you could make smaller ones. You don't have to have circular face no, pads. No, you don't You could actually. have little tiny yes, ones, Yes, you could have you? little square ones. I was just thinking you could just have little square ones. That would be amazing. Yes. And I was, we were talking earlier, weren't we, about Christmas. I think about Christmas all year round. So if it was me, I'd be making my Christmas presents, putting them in the bottom drawer so that they're all ready for Christmas. And then we can get out and enjoy the sun when that it comes. Is, yeah, when it comes. <laughs> um, it also has a table mat in here, doesn't it? This one, yes. That's why I wanted to get onto this one. It has so much in here. This, they're, they're all brilliant. I mean, they're all home. They're all home projects, which is fantastic. Um, and you know, it's it's really great to have the packs because everything's there for you, and you don't have to worry. You can just pick your pack. You can pick your project. But equally, these work perfectly with all your and we've all got them in a big stash I've got a huge stash at home <laughs> all our oddments of, of wool so this is one of my favorite stitches this is what's called that. the waffle stitch it looks and like a waffle it does look like a waffle doesn't it but it's so it's just really dense and again I've gone up a hook size so mine's fluid but it, it's going to make a really nice solid mat and this one is a table mat. Now, um, I, I, I'd only just got the wall, so I was doing this in bed last night. So <laughs> I, I had to stash it too. So I had to stop. So it's not as big as it should be, but I just, I just wanted to show you um, afterwards how to put a little bit of a border on as well. But I'm gonna show you this one and it's called the waffle stitch. Now, for those of you that have never used this stitch, it, it's a brilliant stitch because it's used what's called a front post stitch treble stitch sounds very complicated it does sound but it complicated isn't. but you're going to show us how easy I, um, it is it, it is now for those of you that have seen me um, doing this before i have shown you how to do um trebles so i have just done the first foundation row of trebles i'm hoping i've got the right stitch count if not i won't have the right number at the end of it so so i've done my first row and it does explain it all in here but again you're going to have a much longer row because you'll have the row the length of the the placemat i've just done a little one here to show you the basic stitch now waffle stitch is brilliant because this would make a nice um a pan to put your pan well i wouldn't put anything hot on these because this i just wouldn't want to ruin it anyway but if you want to put a plant pot on there that'd yes. be amazing so you could make a smaller one for a plant pot so this is acrylic yarn isn't it this one I yeah, think. but it's got this is this is where it's so incredible. It feels like cotton. Yes. And cotton can be quite hard to work with. Um, I love working with cotton, but I've worked with a lot of, of yarns over the years. But it's one of the more difficult yarns to work with because it hasn't got that elasticity. Yeah. What you see is what you get with cotton. But this is kind of the best of both worlds yes. because it's got the feel of cotton, but you, it works up like acrylic. It's amazing. Yeah. So it's, it's easy to wash mm. as well, isn't it? And it'll be brilliant for when you do your first project, Mindy. Yes. <laughs> So the first thing that I've done is exactly the same as I, I showed you before is I've done my foundation chain. Now some of them work, some of them start with a foundation chain, other things like granny st squares you'll start with rings or squares. But for these projects we're starting with foundation chains. So all I've done is I've done my first row of trebles. So that's all you do and that, that's really simple, it's just you miss the first three stitches and then you treble into each of the chains back along. And um, again, if you do it a little bit longer than you need, then don't worry because you can always unpick that afterwards. And then for the next row, so we're going to turn. Now, we're doing a chain one, and this doesn't count as anything. This is just like our turning chain. Now, very often when you're working in trebles, because it's quite a tall stitch, you would do a chain three at the beginning. But we don't here, we're literally doing a one chain, 
So I'm doing a one chain as my turning chain. Now this is my first stitch of the round. So it's located right next to the chain that's next to the hook. And it's really important that we go in this one because if we miss this one, then we're not going to have the right stitch count. So there's my turning chain. So this is the stitch that we want to go into. So we're going to go into it with a one treble. So yarn over, insert. Now I always insert in the, the little loop that's at the top. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two, yarn over, pull through the second. Okay, so we're going to, it tells me here that I need to do two of these. I'm looking at this little hole here. Some people go in between the, here. I always like to work in the top of the trebles, which is that little circle at the top, because then they sit nicely on top of each other. If you go in between the chains, then it's going to give you a completely different look. So we yarn over, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, first two off, and yarn over, next two. So I've done my first two trebles. Now the next one is the one that's going to create this waffle. So this is what is going to, to create that nice, they're, they're quite deep, these little squares actually, aren't they? When you mm. see this in the flesh, it's hard to see on the screen, but these are quite deep. By doing these, what's called front post trebles, it raises the stitch forward. So what we're going to do, and to do that, and this, this doesn't sound very logical because we're doing a front, but you go behind the stitch. So we do yarn over, now the next treble is this treble here. So we need to insert the hook under that post. So we're going through that post. And then we just treat it as a treble. So yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull the first two. Yarn over, pull the remaining two. Now what that's done, don't know if the camera can pick that up, it's actually pulled that treble to the forefront. So these two have now gone into the background and this one here has been pushed forward and it's creating that three dimensional effect. So ones where we've done a normal treble, they stay in the background and the one where we do the front post treble, they jump. So if I turn this over now, you'll be able to see that it's kind of the opposite because for the next row, the next row I'm going to show you how to do the next one and then it creates a completely different effect. I've never thought about using it on the back, but I actually it's really quite like nice that effect as well. It is. It's, it's, it's nice. double-sided, this one, isn't it? I'm just thinking it's probably a little bit too dense for a blanket. Yes, unless, mm. unless as you say, you increase your hook size yes. and made Ooh. it softer. I, I, know, I learn. Yes. I do listen. Yes. <laughs> well, I do. Um, but then it will give it a little bit more open weave. That's the only downside yes. of increasing your hook size because it does open the weave up. Now, we've only got 20 minutes left, right. really. So we do need to... We're moving on. Will you move on to your next book then? Or yeah, Are you that okay? That's absolutely fine by me. I'm just continuing the You just continue row. with that bit then. <laughs> so I'm just following the pattern and doing a front post when I need to. Okay. <laughs> so this is our next book called Modern Crocheted Blankets, Throws and Cushions. Again... 35 colourful, cosy and comfortable patterns. And Laura Stark used to be an editor of a magazine. I know her well. Um, and she has created this really sort of eclectic mix here. Again, it's, is it published by the same people? Make it. I don't know because it's, it's got the... Yes, it is. It's got the same fabulous instructions on the back here of how to get started. So you've got all of that again. Now this, um, from this book, we're doing the bobble stitch, which is really lovely. We're doing a granny square, which is a traditional starter, and we're going to do the mandala blanket on, from the front. We've done a section, I say we, the royal we have done this section from the front. <laughs> One I did earlier. This is $12.99 for the book, 35 projects, 35 fabulous projects. Look at this, this, this is the vintage lace granny squares isn't that gorgeous so really beautiful mermaids oh, i just think these are gorgeous these things some of them simpler than others and we've got bobble stitch in here as well so that's what we're going to be looking at in a minute 
But these are very sort of contemporary looking designs, I think. Because crochet, you sort of, you, you know, granny square is what you think of when you sort of mentally picture crochet and you have this vision of granny <laughs> crochet in the squares. Or Wendy on the train. <gasps> <laughs> She's making noises at me. <laughs> it, is, it is modern. It's nice and modern now. It, and it, a lot of people do. A lot of, in fact, a lot of um, celebrities crochet. They do it in the, when they're sitting waiting for their filming to be done. They will crochet. And the, uh, the mandala is really popular. So these are beautiful. So what we have for this, we have got three different projects that we've sort of picked out of this book. We're going to start with the mandala bundle, which is this. Look at this. Ooh. So all of this yarn, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six big balls. Um, is it all from the same one? This is double knit mariner yarn. We've got all of those, those beautiful colours there. Oh, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the big ones, just seen. And then we have eight of the small, the 25 grams, so four of two different colours there. So you've got the orange and the lilac. This is all, all of this for 19.99. Now we've put it to make the mandala blanket, uh, which is on the front of the book. But you don't have to use it for that. You could choose to use it for one of the other projects in there. And there's lots and lots of things to choose from. There's 35. Very contemporary, very modern looking. It's just bringing crochet into where it has been. Uh, no, no notice me saying it's a granny thing. It's been modern and very fashionable for a very long time now. And you can do some wonderful things in beautiful colours. So this is the mandala kit. Now we also have the bobble cushion kit which is this one here. So what I've, all I've got is one ball to show you. What you actually get is, how many balls do you get? Five, so you get five balls and they are style crafts, another good, it's Aaron weight and you get five balls of this and they're 100% premium acrylic. So again, this is actually, I mean, I know this is actually for a cushion cover, Acrylic is easier to wear than wool, actually. It's soft, it's lovely and soft. So you get five balls of this. I've only got one, otherwise the desk would be like, so loaded you wouldn't be able to see anything else. Um, we then have the same in green. Again, this is this Aran weight. And again, you get five balls of this. It's sort of, um, it's a very soft green, this, isn't it? It's a mossy green, yes, it's lovely, very pretty. Feels very soft and lovely. And this is what you'll get, the five balls. You do need to buy the book separately, don't forget, if you want to make this Mandela, or th sorry, this is the bobble stitched cushion. And finally, we have it in cream. So this is the same, Aran weight in cream. And again, you get five of these. So that's very nice. Very subtle. Now, we also have from this book, the granny squares. So this was the this was the sort of lacy granny squares that we looked at, um, this one here. So what we have, we've got two colourways here. So we've got the white and grey. So again, I've only got two balls here, but you get four white and two grey for just £12.99. And you can make this lovely vintage lace granny square. I mean, they've used it as a cloth, but you could use that as a blanky sort of thing. So that's really lovely. And again, this is 100 gram and it's lovely and soft and it's double knit. We have a second colourway of this, which is blue and white. This is from the West Yorkshire Spinners. So this is looking very much like, so again, you're getting two blues and four whites in this. This is 34.99 and this is West Yorkshire Spinners. So it's just really lovely. And then we have finally grey and plum. This is a nice combination. And again, this is the West Yorkshire Spinners. It's Colour Lab, it's called. And you get four grey and two plum. And this is to make the, but again, we put this together for this project, but you don't have to use it for this project. That's up to you. That's up to you entirely. 
So now you've seen all of that, get it in your baskets, buy it, and then we'll go to Wendy for a little demo on the bobbles. And that West, West Yorkshire spinner's yarn is gorgeous. Is That's it? Absolutely. Really beautiful. lovely. It does it feel really lovely. Is, it's really, really gorgeous. It's so soft. Bobbles. Bobbles. Now, um, remember me saying that stitches all have different lengths and different heights. Um, with the bobble, it's created by using a treble or you do an incomplete treble, and I'll show you how to do that. Now, what you can make is this absolutely gorgeous cushion cover. It's really, really beautiful. This beautiful cushion cover. And you'll see here that I have the swatch, and I haven't, com comp I haven't completed the whole one. I just wanted to show you a section of it, but you can see how three-dimensional these bobble stitches are. So let's get started and I'll show you how to do that. So I've just made a little swatch and the, again, this is beautifully written. All these three books are beautifully written. So you will be able to, um, it, it, they will guide you through and they show you the techniques. And this one even shows you how to hold, hold the uh, crochet hook and how to do your tension, which is brilliant. So it shows you how to do everything in there. So if you get stuck, then just refer back to that. Or you will see that when you're on the pattern itself, it will tell you the special abbreviations here and it will tell you how they're formed. So if you can have a look on your own, Wendy, yeah. it tells you that there is a bobble stitch involved in this one. So it, it will explain the step by step on how you do the bobble. So over here, instead of saying all this, it will just say bobble into the next stitch. But then if you just forget what you're doing, then you can go, go back, back to see to how a bobble is made. Now, this one is brilliant because um, it's all it is is double crochets and bobble stitches this one so I've, I've done a few just to show you and the hardest thing about this one is when you come back the other way is getting your stitch count right that's the hardest thing that's the hardest thing in this it's not even the bobble stitch that's the hardest thing so what we're going to do I've just created one bobble stitch so I'm just going to do what it tells me to do it then says to do three double crochet stitches and remember, a double crochet is insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook, yarn, yarn over. over. Oh, yeah, I'm getting there. You are. I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to make. Please tag me. <laughs> <laughs> now it tells me to do. A do you have to use Aran weight for this one? Not at all. You don't. Again, the only thing that I would say that unless you're using the specific wool and hook it may not come out the right size. Right. Um, because someone has, you know, painstakingly sat and, and crocheted these and make sure that all the sizing is right. If you're doing a different hook and a different yarn, but have a play. Yeah. It, it's just get your cushion. What I would say is get your cushion pad and have a play and just do a few rows and see if it works. Um, you may have to unpick it a couple of times. But then I always have a notepad by the side. So then I write down how many stitches it took with certain wool and what hook I use for next time. So we're now going to create our bobble stitch. Now the bobble stitch is really just a load of unfinished half tr um, trebles. So we yarn over and I'm going to insert into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, three loops on the hook. Now with a treble you would do yarn over, pull two, yarn over the other two. But we're not going to do that last step, we're just going to leave those two loops sitting on there now. Then what we're going to do, we're going to create another unfinished treble. So yarn over and we're going straight back into that same stitch and pull through and yarn over and take the first two off. So now each time we do an unfinished treble, we're adding an extra loop onto our hook and we keep going until we have got 10 loops onto the hook. Now, each time I'm doing them, I'm in yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and complete the first part. But I'm pulling the hook upwards so that I'm trying to create a nice, even set of loops up here. You're going to find it much easier when you come to take them off at the end. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, yarn over. And we, remember, we're going into the same one each time. And the more stitches that are packed into that one stitch, then we're going to have a nice big bobble. And I have forgotten how many I've got. So then if that happens, just need to count them. Two, four, six, eight, nine. So I need to do one more. 
Uh, you might find at this point it's a little bit of a squeeze to get them all in there. But they're all in that bottom stitch there. Then all we need to do is yarn over and pull all of them off. And that is your bobble stitch. That wow. is it. That is a bobble stitch. Now you can, there are different, there's a puff stitch and a bobble stitch and they all look fairly similar but they're all created in a different way but I love the puff stitch, I absolutely love it. The one thing we now need to do, we don't do a chain to secure that bobble, we literally go into the stitch to the left and you want to do this one fairly tight and it's just a double crochet because that now anchors that bobble down. How cool is that? That's an amazing stitch, isn't it? Isn't it fabulous? It is. And now, if you had smaller bobble, you wouldn't do so many stitches. That's see, you learn. I know. Aren't you? <laughs> We're going to make a crochet or a knitter out of you, yeah, aren't we? <laughs> um, and then we just continue to do, uh, and it's all explains in there how many you need to do in between. Now you don't do it every stitch because obviously, if you try to cram one of these in every single stitch, it's going to fan out. The, the, you, the most you would do is one in every other, but they've spaced these out. I, I like the fact that they're not too close to oh, each I other. Oh, I do. I think they're more, more defined because of that. Definitely. Um, and then I'm not going to go to the end because it will take me quite a while. So I'm just going to pretend that I've gone to the end and go back around. So I just wanted you to show you that when you go back along, you're just going to do um, a, a couple of rows of just normal double crochets. But I just want to show you around the bobble where you go. So we go into that stitch that's just before the bobble. So that counts as a stitch. And then at the top of the bobble counts to a as a stitch. Now, if you don't do that and don't do a stitch in the top of that bo bobble, you're not going to have enough stitches when you come to the end. Now, this is a project that I would say don't have loads and loads of noise around you because you do want to be counting your stitch. Normally, I just say put a stitch marker in the end, put a stitch marker in each end. But with this one, you do really need to be counting as you go along. Once you've done that initial row of double crochets behind the bobbles, then the next one, it'll be easy to see. But for that first row mm. behind those bobbles, just, you just need to concentrate a little bit more. But I'm sure you'll agree the overall effect is I think it's fabulous. really I worth really it, do. isn't it? It's amazing. And the book explains it very clearly, doesn't it? It does. It does. Now, very, we've got less good. than 10 minutes left. Oh, no, I can't no, believe no, no. this. No, no. Right. Can you please show us the mandala in front of you? Because that is so beautiful. Yes. I didn't, I didn't, wasn't sent enough wool, so I couldn't finish it. Because the trouble well, with me is once I start, I can't stop. So I'm... And that is lovely. <laughs> I'm quite glad. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Isn't it? I Absolutely love those colours. Now, um, it's... When you're working in the round, you have to increase. If you don't increase in the round, it just ends up like a tube. So if whatever you start with, if you just keep going, it would just go up and up and up and up. So with this, the brilliant thing about these patterns are it talks you through every, oh, you're having a look now. So I'm having a look at it. Oh, you, that's just a cushion. Uh, it should be the first project, I think, actually. In that book. Look. Is it not? I'm sure it's the first oh. one. I mean, you dive right into it, I'm I sure. Know, you um, but the working the round is not as hard as people may that's it, yeah. That's it. Uh, not as hard as people may think it is. Now I have got a definite right side and a wrong side here. With knitting, you have a knit stitch and a purl stitch. Now, if you keep going the same way round with the same side, you will create that with crochet. So this one is kind of my knit stitch, and then if I turn it over, you can see that this one is much more. I'm trying to put the two together right. So this one is much bobblier on the back, and then that one is much flatter. So it's a bit like a knit and purl. Some people turn their work over each time they do it, so it, you don't get a right and a wrong. They're both the right side kind of effect. And some people say that it stops it warping and things like that. I've only ever gone round in one way. And it's very, very easy. You will start off with a magic ring. Now, I would just say that if you're not confident working a magic ring just work chains and I would advise if when you start yours to do this <laughs> I would start with chains first I'll just show you how to do that center so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a slip knot and work a chain and then I'm going to do four or five chains is good so that's two three four let's do five 
and then we do a slip knot back into that first chain. And what that will do is that will create a ring. So we've now got a little hole. So that in effect is our magic ring. Now a magic ring is simply a way of uh, working into uh, the, you, you don't create change, you just wind wall round and when you finished it going into your magic ring and pull it tight, it disappears. This doesn't, you will have a hole left at the end of it, but I would absolutely advise anyone that's starting crochet to do this method first because the magic rings sometimes do have a mind of its own. And then all we do is work. How much time have we got? We probably haven't got time now to Two show Two minutes. Oh, no, no, we haven't got time to do that. But you would literally just work trebles, and change your colour each time you go round. You don't have to change colour if you don't want to. No. <laughs> you yeah. can do, it's up to you. Once you get this home, there's plenty of wool there to do what you want. But I just think that, that the colours that Rebecca has chosen are gorgeous. They're absolutely fantastic, these colours. Um, and then every fifth row, you do an increase row. So you will see here, you've got two trebles worked where there were one and then you go further and then you've got two trebles and two trebles and that's what makes it grow because as oh. I say, if you don't increase, then it's gonna end up like a tube. I think it's really fabulous. Brilliant. It's all explained in the book here. It so is. I'm just absolutely fascinated. That's why I was I quiet. Could I could see you were. <laughs> You're in quiet. Awe. Now uh, the final book that we have today, I yes. uh, must quickly mention this book here. This is Crochet Home by Emma Lamb. So the other one was Crocheted Home. This is Crochet Home. This is by Emma Lamb. This is 20 vintage and modern mm. projects, 12 99 again. And yet again, it has got some lovely designs in here, lovely projects. And also with this one, if you are a fan of following a chart as opposed to written instructions, it has, you can see has that one there. As it well. has the charts as well. Now again, people are a little bit scared about working with charts, but simply just once you've got used to what the different little symbols mean, they are very, very easy to follow. Yes. But the, the beauty of this is you have those written instructions as well as the chart for that one. And there's some, um, that cushion is Isn't gorgeous. That gorgeous. There are some amazing projects in this one. Yes, absolutely. Now again, We've made a bundle for a pattern. Which one is it? The pinwheel cushion. And we've got it all in pastels. I don't know if I can find the pinwheel cushion. Uh, pop, pop, pinwheel cushion. It's the blanket, 88. isn't it? I'm just trying to think what page it is. 88, it's, I think. It is. Page 88. And I have made one here. I just made one Here's little wait. one. So this is, this is what we're looking at, the pinwheel cushion. So this is what, if you're, if you're doing um, with your half square triangles, you can make your pinwheel. But what we have here, so is this all of this yarn is for that one, yes? So th this is what we've picked out of this book. So again, it's up to you what you use mm -hmm. it for. But what we have is a mix in here of some variegated, some sparkly. This one's got a nice little sparkle to it. This is one you've used mm -hmm. for your little patch there, isn't it? That's got a really lovely spark. Can you see that sparkle? It's it really shows green. when you crochet it's, You can it see it well. when it's crocheted, it really shows, can't yeah. you? Um, so you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven balls, uh, double knitting in these fabulous, lovely pastel colours to make that. That would look lovely. I mean, mm -hmm. that would look great, but I think also, you know, have a look at the projects. You're getting all of this for 19 99 all seven balls, 100 grams, double knitting. Um, and this is a mixture of polyester and acrylic. So it's a really lovely one. Stock up your stash as well. So you might not want to make the cushion, but you might think, actually, I love those yarns and I'll use them for other projects. And there are lots of projects, 20 projects in that book for 12 99 What can we say about this book in one minute, Wendy? Uh, just buy it and just have a play. <laughs> and again, um, like you've got the cushion there with the flower on the front, but you could make an, a, a throw with the flower in the middle. There's just so much you can do. And... Um, it's just, I love the fact that you're offering the pastels as well, because sometimes we just make things in such bright colours, don't we? But having the pastel pack, and I've, again, I've had the pleasure of using these yarns, these acrylics, they're really, really lovely, this wool to work with. You find some of them are a bit scratchy, these are not, these are absolutely beautiful. Really beautiful yes. and soft and lovely. They are. Wow, thank you, Wendy. No, thank you. And We've just gone through everything we can today. Now, some of that's been a bit quick. Yeah, sorry. So please do look at the website. Um, 
or go on the fans page and you can see things on the fan page but all of the, everything that we've shown you today all these three books all these different yarn bundles that we've shown you are on the website now um, and they are these books are full of inspiration mm. if you're into crochet at all or if you want to get into crochet as I need to now we really are running out of time so yarn lane is back on Friday with Catherine Wright doing some women's clothing knits all oh, right okay women clothing knits so that is it for today so do join them on Friday we'll be back for sewing street tomorrow morning so I shall see you all then <laughs>